Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at um, a slightly more rigorous proof of why it's okay, no one noticed, uh, why the volume of pyramid of the third times by the area of the base times by the height. Um, so you might have seen a slightly less satisfying um, intu intuitive demonstration showing that it's a sixth of a cube, and I'm working it out that way. Um, but in this case, we're going to prove it a little bit more rigorously. Okay, so um, what you need to sort of be a little bit familiar with this video, and I will explain each step um, in a little bit more detail, um, but what you do need to be a little bit familiar with is integration. Um, but again, I will explain it in a little bit of detail, so even if you're just a little familiar with what integration is, even in a vague sense, you should be able to follow along. Okay, so what we've got is um, we've got a pyramid, um, we've got a base with an area of A, and it's got a height of H. And what we're going to do, um, sort of in a more general sense, is we're going to chop this pyramid into lots of thin layers, um, and we're going to add up the volumes of each of those layers. Um, and if the slices are thin enough, and actually if we make the slices infinitely thin, and have infinitely many of them, um, then it's going to be exactly the volume of the pyramid. Um, so that's our general strategy. Uh, so what I've done is I've drawn on one of these slices, um, and our first step is to find the volume of one of the slices. Um, now that's sort of got two steps really. We need to find the area of this pentagon, um, and again this is a general shape, it could be any shape, and um, in this case it's a pentagon, but we need to sort of find the area of this pentagon, um, and then we need to times it by the width of the slice, which is um, delta x. I've called it delta x because it's a small change in x and it's really really small um, and we'll you know we can do some math to deal with that in a second um, but the first thing we need to do really is find the area of this shape and um, now it's easier to work from the top down um, so if we think of these in centimeters again it's general so we don't need units uh, but if we think of these in centimeters if this slice is x centimeters from the top and the pyramid is eight centimeters altogether, then as a fraction, it's x eighths down the pyramid. Um, so if h was two and x was one, it would be halfway down the pyramid. If h was three and x was one, it'd be a third of the way down the pyramid. If h was five and x was four, it'd be four fifths of the way down the pyramid. Generally speaking, this is h, x eighths of the way down the pyramid. Um, and that's really useful because of the way the pyramid's structured, I know that this pentagon, the purple slice, is mathematically similar to the red slice, which means it's the same shape, it's just a little bit smaller. Um, and because it's x eighths of the way down the pyramid, I know that each side each side is x eighths as long. Um, as the base, okay, um, which means the scale factor is x eighths. Now, if the scale factor is x eighths um, for the lengths, then I know that the scale factor for the area is that squared. So my scale factor is x eighths squared, that's my area scale factor which means that the area of the purple hexagon, pentagon, um, is equal to x eighths squared, the area of the red pentagon at the bottom. So my area of each of these purple slices, the area of one of the faces, is x eighths squared times by the area of the base. Um, which means the volume of one of these purple slices is x eighths squared times by the area of the base times by the width delta x. Oh gosh, that's not a, that's not a, that's a bad delta, isn't it? Delta x. Okay, good. So on to our next step. Okay, so we've just found the volume of the slice and now we're going to look at um, how we can add up all those slices um, and then make them really, really thin so that the volume of the sum of all those slices 
is equal to the volume of the whole pyramid. Okay, so um, let's have a look at that. So what I'm going to do is I've got the volume of each slice um, at x down the pyramid is equal to this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up. Now this is the Greek letter sigma um, and it just means sum or to add up. So we're going to add up all of these volumes. Um, now the first one we're going to add up is where x is equal to zero. It's this slice right at the top. Um, so x is going to go from zero um, and it's going to go all the way up to where the slice right at the bottom where x is h of the way down. Um, that's going to go to h. Now you might be thinking, well, if x lines up with the top face of this slice um, for it to start at zero, then this bottom face of this slice is going to hang over slightly. Um, but because we're going to take the limit later on, you don't really need to worry about that because this delta x is going to be so thin that it's going to make no difference. Okay, to our final answer. So we're going to find the sum of all these vx's. Um, and we are going to do h, we're not going to do anything silly with h minus delta x because we'll get the same answer. Um, so that's equal to um, the sum between x equals 0 to h of this guy. So x over h squared a delta x. Okay, now what we're going to do, the volume of the pyramid is exactly the same as this um, in the limit when delta x goes to zero. Okay, so if we make delta x smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and get it closer and closer to zero, infinitely close to zero in fact, um, when we add up all these slices, that's going to be exactly equal to the volume of my pyramid. And now if you've watched any sort of um, videos on integration before, you'll know that the limit of a sum as delta x goes to zero is actually just the integral. Uh, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to integrate um, from x equals zero to h. We're going to integrate this guy here. Uh, let's keep the colours the same so we know where they've all come from. And we're going to integrate this guy here. So x over h times by the area, times by, now the limit as x goes to zero, we swap this delta x for a dx in calculus, it's just a little notation thing. Um, and that should be a squared. So now what we need to do, we've got our integral and we need to integrate that. Um, so hold on to your hats because it's about to get integrally. Okay, so Final step, we need to integrate this thing here. Um, so what we'll do first is we'll just tidy up slightly. Um, so this dx tells me that I'm integrating with respect to x. x is the thing I'm changing, x is the thing I'm adding things up with. Um, so because the height of the pyramid doesn't change if we move our slice up and down, um, we don't need to have that inside the integral. We can factorise that out almost as a constant. Um, similarly, this area of the base doesn't change if I move my slice up and down. The area of the purple slice changes, the area of the base stays the same. So again, I can write that, I can factorise that out um, as a constant at the front. So a, uh, now if I pull this h out, it turns into 1 over h squared, because um, we've got an h on the bottom that's squared. So a, 1 over h squared and times by the integral from x equals 0 to h. Now if I got rid of this a and I got rid of this h, I'm just left with x squared. And now the integral of x squared, um, again we can prove this in another video, uh, but the integral of x squared, well we add 1 to the power and then divide by that new power, so we get, um, if we add 1 to 2 we get 3, then divide by 3, it's the same as times in by a third, um, so we get a 1 over h squared times by um, a third of x cubed 
um, and that's gone between 0 and h. Now to go between 0 and h, we simply substitute those values in and subtract um, when we substitute in the h with the 0. And this is quite easy because if we substitute in 0, we get 0 cubed is 0, everything turns into 0. So what we'll do now is we've got a times by 1 over h squared times by, well, it's a third. If I substitute h in, I get h cubed. Um, and this is, remember, this is the volume of the whole pyramid. And um, so what we get is we get this h squared cancels with this h cubed to leave an h to the power of 1, or just h. So our final answer is our volume is equal to the area of the base times by a third times by h, or a third a h, not we're after. Um, so that is, that is a proof that's um, general, completely general. Um, so hopefully, if you followed along with that, that's a little bit more. Um, either it's a satisfying proof if you've done a little bit of calculus to something that you've always wondered why is the case, um, or it's a bit of a glimpse of looking forward if you are interested in doing A-level maths because um, this is the sort of thing we can do with that. Um, and we're going to add up the volumes of each of those layers. Okay, so if we take um, a layer here, for example. Oh dear, that's a bad drawing, isn't it? 